Hey, I've been thinking about this for a while. So we've got some piece of steel wool and it's been sitting out for a little while. And we wanted to see how, how can we affect the, uh, the rate of corrosion uh, by subjecting it to different conditions. So uh, if you are a fencer, uh, you might be familiar with using swords or, or pieces of metal. And one of the ways that you can protect your uh, equipment from corroding in the open air um, is to uh, cover it with a layer of oil. And so we've simulated this effect by basically dunking it in a piece of, uh, in a solution of oil. And if you look at the open air and the, um, the oil, they looked practically the same. So um, I suspect that the, the, the open air, it's been sitting around for about a week now, I suspect that this one uh, hasn't corroded as quickly because we're in the middle of winter and we've got some very low humidity at the moment. Then we tried um, testing it with um, some salt water and some regular water. And uh, you would expect that the salt water should corrode the most quickly. But what ended up happening is that since there's so much surface area of the steel wool, there's very, very, uh, very small amount of bulk and there's lots and lots of area where the water molecules can, um, uh, can make contact and react that they reacted so quickly, it's about 20, about 40 minutes of this thing and they went straight to brown. So I wasn't able to catch it in time to find out which one turned brown first. But the question is, why does salt water actually make the rust occur more quickly, or at least theoretically? Let's consult the whiteboard. Hello and welcome back. So let's analyze, uh, let's, let's look at the atoms that are involved and the molecules that are involved into why the iron is rusting um, in the solution. And then we'll analyze how would the salt added to the water make any difference to the rate of corrosion. So if we revisit the uh, corrosion example from the Eiffel Tower video, We've basically got similar thing. I've just drawn it uh, perhaps in a beaker rather than a bead of water uh, on the surface of a piece of metal. So I've got these iron atoms uh, arranged in, uh, say, like a cylinder uh, to represent the wires that are uh, in the steel wool. And I've got my water here. Water self-ionizes, meaning that it forms ions. It uh, can separate into a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion. The thing is, that our water does not do this very much. It's a very, very small amount that it'll, only a small amount of the water will actually ionize. Most of the time, it'll live as a H2O molecule. That means there's only a very few hydrogen and, uh, and hydroxide ions that are actually available to do any reacting in the water solution. But once they have uh, reacted, uh, once they have ionized into hydrogen ions, that hydrogen ion um, can accept electrons from the ion atoms. So the ion atoms wants to give away its two electrons uh, to the hydrogen ion. And then once the hydrogen ion has these electrons, it can then react with the oxygen, uh, oxygen molecules in the water that has been dissolved from the air, dissolved into the water. If you don't believe me, this is how your fish stay alive in a fishbowl. You aerate the water. It actually can dissolve in the water. So the oxygen is dissolved in the water, it can then react with the hydrogen ion along with the two electrons and form another water molecule. But this depends, the rate at which this happens depends on how quickly the ion atoms can give away its electrons to the hydrogen ion. And we know that um, ions in solution, cations and ions, they carry charge from one end of the uh, solution to the other. But if there's very few hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, then this is going to slow down. So it, I'm just going to isolate these uh, hydroxide ions and the H plus ions. So I'll just rub out uh, the other bits, which are not as uh, not very important right now. So we accept that there's oxygen uh, oxygen molecules in the water, and let's say that's um, that's let's say that's the only. Uh, quantities of ions we have in the solution. That means if this iron atom wants to give away its electrons to a hydrogen ion, it has to wait for this hydrogen ion to finish swimming around in the water and eventually bump into it, such that on contact it can then transfer its electrons across. That'll take time, which slows down the rate of reaction of the corrosion process. However, we can increase the rate by helping the transfer of electrons from here to there. And one way you can do this is that you can introduce a salt. 
So I'll introduce, say, sodium chloride. So here's my uh, sodium ion. I can have my chloride ion here. I can have another sodium ion down here and another chloride ion and so on and so forth till you fill this beaker full of cations and anions. And we know from doing experiments that salt is electrically conductive when it's aqueous, meaning dissolved in the water. This is the reason why when you chuck a toaster into the bathtub, you get electrocuted uh, because the salt that comes off your skin dissolves in the water, forms a salty solution that is, enabled to, that is able to conduct electrical charge from one uh, point, meaning the toaster, towards yourself or maybe the bottom of the bathtub, depending on what it's made out of. So if I've got lots and lots of these salt um, ions in the solution, then that means that it's more likely that this sodium ion is going to bump into this piece of metal more frequently than the very few um, hydrogen and, and hydroxide ions will. That means that instead of trying to wait all this time to transfer its two electrons to the hydrogen ion, it can temporarily give some to the uh, sodium ion in solution, and that sodium ion can then swim around and transfer it to the hydrogen ion in solution. It's kind of like a helper, like a messenger or a mailman of electrons. It helps the reaction go forward, but is not actually part of the uh, it's not part of the um, product. So it's not really consumed in the reaction, it just helps it go forward. And so theoretically, um, iron and other metals should corrode much more quickly um, in a salty solution. And this is what we observe, um, that uh, particularly on boats or uh, on, on the, uh, the, the jetties and other things, you find lots of bits of iron have corroded very, very, uh, um, very noticeably. And that's probably due to the fact that there's lots of salt in the um, in the, uh, the water and possibly the air. Okay, I hope this helps.